What kind of palette should I buy? Or you, you, you're just starting with watercolors. Why should you buy one of these very expensive and fancy, beautiful um, porcelain palettes? You can do that in the future when you're more sure about your commitment with watercolors. To start, I would suggest something very simple, something like this. It can be any other. Eh? I, I got this. I, in fact, I've got two like this. Why? Well, because it contains enough enough wells. Because you, you've got this tray you can get out. So you've got this area to make colors, these two areas to make colors, plus this other area. So you've got plenty of room to mix colors. And this palette is around 13, 14 euros, suppose the same in dollars, more or less. And so it's not a great investment. Second thing, when we're starting with watercolors is, oh my God, you know, I've seen this artist using so and so and so and colors and I'm going to buy them. Oh, but now I've seen this other artist that paints beautifully and they're using other colors. Oh my God, oh my God. And then you go crazy and you end up with this and this. Tons of colors. How many of these colors do I use? In truth, I use quite a few of them because I paint portraits mainly. Dog, animal portraits and people portraits. But I don't use them all. After the experience, I don't use them all at all. And as of this, well, I bought this second one because I didn't have any more room here. So I bought the second one and this second one's got colors that, to be honest with you, I hardly use. So, you're starting with watercolors. You are just starting. How, what kind of colors should you use? Well, I have created a third palette. This is for you. And for me as well, obviously, because I intend to use this one very much. Forget about these colours here. These are convenient colours for me because I paint animal portraits. And this is yellow ochre and burnt sienna and burnt amber. But forget about these colours. I want you to concentrate on these colours. Now, what are these colours? This is a warm yellow, cool yellow, warm red, cool red. Warm blue, cool blue. I've got two cool blues, but because I want to test them, right? I mean, I know how they work separately, especially Taylor blue. Now, I'm going to tell you the colors I have here, but I'm also going to provide you with a small list of other alternative colors. So you don't have to stick by this, by the colors I say. Okay, so this is a warm yellow. In my case, I have chosen New Gamboche. This is a cool yellow, Winsor Lemon. This is a Winsor Red, Pirol Red. A cool red, this one is Permanent Rose. It could be Queen Magenta, it could be Elizabeth Crimson. This is a warm uh, blue, which is Ultramarine Blue. And these two are Taylor Blue red shade and green shade. They are not exactly the same and I want to test how they will mix. I know how this one mixes, but I want to know how this one mixes. And this is what I would get to start with. Because with these colors, you're going to get all a full range of colors, all the colors you actually need to paint anything. Now, as you go along, as you learn more, then you can choose um, your own colors and increase the colors based on what you want to paint. Do you want to paint portraits? Do you want to paint landscapes? Or do you want to be a botanical artist? Or 
or still life or everything, depending on what you want to do, you will see that you might want to buy any other color. But to start, to start, just go for these. Warm and cool of each primary. That is absolutely enough. You don't need anything else. 